Joining us now in the studio is Bob Metcalf. Bob is the founder and chairman of one of the leading networking companies, 3Com. And sitting next to Bob, Sherry Geddes, formerly of SciTech and now an analyst specializing in networks with Strategic Incorporated. Gary? Bob, uh, two years ago we had a show on LANs, and at that point we were talking, uh, I think, through modems and so forth to big computer systems, and I really didn't consider that myself, at least, a local area network. Um, would you say that we've really made uh, some progress in the last two years, or, or LANs are successful, or just what, what's happened? Well, I think uh, uh, LANs are going to be a long time coming, mm -hmm. and they, uh, for some of us, they go back 10 or 15 years. I'd guess there's about 100,000 uh, LANs uh, with uh, several hundred thousand personal computers connected to them now, and to some of us, that's a big number, and to others, that's a small number. Well, relative to the number of people that, uh, that really need an LAN, I mean, the average person in the home really doesn't, <laughs> doesn't have to have a local area network, really, do they? I mean, so, so the, if we have 100,000 installed, that, I, I think that would be considered a success, wouldn't it? Uh, a relative success. I think some of us think the potential is much bigger than that. As we're looking at the arrival of PC LANs as sort of the next major generation of how computing is to be accomplished, and so to us, 100,000 LANs seems like a small number. There are seven or eight million PCs so far in business, and mm -hmm. uh, so I think the numbers could get quite a bit larger than they well, are. Well, in the case of, let's take business as an example. Um, what, the, the real advantage of a personal computer is it's sitting there on a desk, it's all by itself, but the disadvantage is that it doesn't have access to a big database, and there's, it really isn't built for I.O. processing. So uh, is that where LAN really helps out in an office? Absolutely. The standalone PC is sort of a transient in uh, the development of computers, mm -hmm. uh, useful up to a point. And as you say, one of the main reasons to have an LAN is to give that PC access to uh, large amounts of data. It can't have itself, or which is updated frequently by many, many other people. Now, one of the things that's been mentioned in the, is the token ring standard that IBM has proposed. Uh, this is just one of many different ways that we, these machines can communicate. Uh, Sherry, you've been working apparently with PBX systems. Yes, I and, have PBX and, and local area networks. Can, can you get high data rates, say, say, through a PBX? PBX is basically a telephone system, isn't it? <laughs> You can get high data rates on specialized PBXs called data PBXs. On the general purpose PBXs, the high-end ones, the integrated voice data PBXs, the rates are still relatively low. But the throughput's very good, and that's, that's a critical distinction between throughput and data rate. Mm -hmm. Many users don't need a high data rate. They need a high throughput rate because lots of people need access essentially simultaneously. Okay. Bob, now, you've got a system here, uh, as we mentioned, I think, earlier, you were involved in the development of Ethernet, and you have a kind of derivative of that you call EtherMAC, which happens to be connecting some Macintoshes here. Show us how this works, this existing network system. Well, here's a, a Macintosh, which is now familiar to hundreds of thousands of people, but, uh, and you'll notice that there's this one diskette and its keyboard. Now, by putting this diskette in, what we're causing it to do is to go out over a network. It's connected to an Apple Talk network to a, a network server elsewhere in the building. Okay, well, let's explain right now. In fact, we have the network server right over here elsewhere in our studio uh, with Derek as if he were in another office, let's say, in the building operating uh, another Macintosh, and, and that's the network server over there. Now, what's happening as you load this up then, Bob? Well, because this is uh, my diskette, and so it it logs me into the network. That is, it identifies me to the network and hooks me up with my data, data which is not on this boot diskette, but which is elsewhere, in this in case, on that server. network server. Yeah. And then according to my normal practice, it's now identified me and connected me up to my data. And what you'll see here are uh, what amount to um, virtual diskettes. That is, each of these icons represents a diskette uh, that's on that network server down the hall. Now, if you were to compare this, say, with the, the speed of data access from one of these little, from this floppy, from this little disk to the, to the network, what's the comparison in the data rates? The, the, it's a funny thing. You would think that going a greater distance, things would be slower. In fact, the, uh, in this network, we, are, we get performances two or three times that that you get off the diskette. Mm -hmm. That is, the network is faster than the disk in the network server is a Winchester disk. It's okay. quite fast. Now, could you give us an example now? Let's, we've got Derek over there working in his office, and you're, you want to find out what he's working on or share a particular file with him. Could we actually see you do that? Well, here's a... Uh, I happen to know that uh, Derek... Uh, this is Derek's diskette here called Data2. So if I open it in the normal way that I would open a diskette, I now see uh, a bunch of documents that uh, Derek is probably currently looking at at this very mm -hmm. moment. And so if I were to go up here to... Uh, uh, let's say Diag X and open it up. This is the same uh, Mac Draw document that Derek is now 
hopefully looking at on his uh, <laughs> Macintosh over there. Now, this brings up the question about file protection, of course, and I assume that that's part of the system as well. While I was uh, connecting up to various mm -hmm. uh, volumes, I, if there was a password associated okay. with the volume, I would have had to present it as I did. And how about simultaneous access to the same files, writing to the same files and things of that sort? Well, most of the software that runs on PCs, uh, and by most I mean 99% of it is written to run on one PC. If you direct two PCs simultaneously at the same diskette and they both try to manipulate the data, some data damage can be uh, encountered. And that's why you have to take special concerns in the designing of the network to be sure that people don't simultaneously manipulate okay. the same this data. This is a sort of a traditional problem with uh, taking single user applications and bringing them into a multi-user environment. Bob, your, your demonstration here happens to be with two Macs, but of course the system you're demonstrating could be with two IBM PCs or other computers, correct? Yeah, in the case of this particular system, there could be hundreds of Macintoshes and hundreds of IBM PCs and compacts and so on. Sherry, given the problem that, that, that Gary and Bob were talking about uh, of standards, uh, we have a system that's working right here. What's the big deal about the IBM token ring system? Is it just one of, of a new standard? Well, it's a different approach. Uh, the type of system we have here is a collision-based system, and it provides very, very good access for users in an office-type environment. One of the key advantages of the token approach is that every device knows it is going to get the token at a predetermined time. This can be very important if you have, for instance, a factory-type situation where you, ha you know those devices have got to be polled every so many nanoseconds or microseconds, as the case may be. Mm -hmm. In an office environment, this is useful in a bisynchronous uh, situation in IBM Bisync. It is also useful if you have a very large population and you don't have any type of prioritization scheme to, otherwise you could literally have users who maybe never succeeded in getting on the network. I personally consider that's a very rare possibility. I think the significance of the token ring is for IBM customers and those shops that are primarily IBM equipment because it will eventually interface into SNA and provide a, mm -hmm. a very nice transition through. Bob, on your Ethernet system here, we're just sharing files right now. You could, you could be sharing peripherals, I assume, under this system also. Yeah, and what, in fact, one of the strong advantages of this configuration is you could put a laser writer on the network server, and then all the PCs and all the Macs could send documents to the laser writer and share it. What does this uh, system cost? This is an example the what we're, sh we're showing right here. About $10,000 plus the cost of the PCs. Okay. Okay, Bob, Sherry, thank you very much. We've got to move on. We're going to next go to New York and take a look and find out a little bit more about IBM's new token ring system. Soon we'll see a demo.